In the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, let me read it for you. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 So let us stand, please. Let us pray, Father God, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Glory to the King of Kings, glory to the Lord of Lords, and you are Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, hallelujah. Glory in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Glory, glory in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, glory. Father God, we thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy to on our lives, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. We invite you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Glory, glory, as we acknowledge your presence, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Father God, I come to your presence, Lord. Humbly bow before your holy presence, Lord. If you see in our heart and our mind all the things that holding us up to praise you, to serve you, Lord, we ask for forgiveness and freedom in the name of Jesus. Father God, I dedicate you the very presence of this service. Hallelujah. Let your Holy Spirit fill us up, Lord Jesus. To open our eyes, our mind, who you are, hallelujah, to give us the right wisdom, to grow into your word, to grow to your prayer, hallelujah, glory in the name of Jesus. Lord, I dedicated to you the Sunday service of Numa, hallelujah, this very presence, Lord. Lord Jesus, open our eyes, our mind to see your presence and to grow into your word. Let the precious press a fresh anointing in the presence of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, to saturate us, Lord, to open our heart, our mind only to you, to focus to you, Father God. Hallelujah. Glory. As we declare, Lord, anointing, Lord Jesus, as we declare blessings in the name of Jesus, as we declare healing and restoration in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we declare freedom in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, we pray for a fresh anointing as we listen to our praise and worship. Bless and anoint all those worship leaders as we have today, Lord, as we utter our praises only to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, open our ears that your precious anointing as we listen to your message, Lord Jesus, to grow in our life, not only listening, but to grow into your message, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you as we declare victory. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for setting us free from our sin, Lord, that he took away and gave us eternal life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We dedicated everything to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Our Lord God Almighty. Before I'll do the exhortation for the tithes and offering, I just want to say that this month is the Pastor Appreciation Month. And we thank you, Jesus, for the life of our Pastor Romy. Our Pastor Romy, Pastor Romy, you are a faithful and a true servant of God. We appreciate in all you do in our ministry. You are the salt and the light in this church. Amen. And we pray for a healing, strength, Amen. and peace from God. Amen. All right? And you are the good testimony and the good inspiration to all of us. Amen. Amen. Be a blessing in the church. Be a good steward to our ministry by giving our tithes and offerings to continue and expand the kingdom of God. All we can do is to help and support and ministry. Tithes and offering plays a significant role, particularly in the church ministry. And it can help uh, the maintenance and operating cost of the church. It is also helps for those in need promoting fairness and generosity and fostering our culture of sharing and the provision of God from us to do outreach program, doing missionary works. And it also exercising our gift and fruits of the Holy Spirit. When we tithe, we place God as our first priority. We trust in God's abundance instead of worrying about not having enough. 
So Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats but, will brim over the new vine. And also it says on Psalm 127 to 2, we are all guilty of this. It is useless for you to work so hard from early in the morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat. For God gives rest to his loved ones. So we all need a rest. We all need God's provision. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, the creator of heaven and earth, the Alpha and Omega, the good, good father, the good shepherd, the prince of peace, the great provider, the great healer, our Messiah, the God of hope and miracle, and the God of peace. As we bring our offerings to you, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given to us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God. Thank you for being our strength, our refuge, our joy. May we give our offerings to you with gladness and joy. God, accept our tithes and offering as a gift of worship and multiply what we give for the effective growth of your kingdom. Give us a pure heart, humble and generous heart. We give to you all the glory, honor, and belongs to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Let's give it to the Lord. Father God, we just give it to you, all the things that we're about to talk, Lord, and this is all about you, Lord Jesus, and all the things that we've done is for your glory, from testimony after testimony, from uh, exhortation, from prayers, from worship, oh Lord God, it's all coming back to you, Lord. It's all for you, Jesus. So today, as we, as we come, Lord, to hear your word, oh Lord, Speak to us clearly, Lord, what you want us to, to hear today. And we are here to open our eyes, to open our mind, to open our soul and our heart, O oh Lord, to receive that word that comes from you. I pray with the Holy Spirit to, glo to fall on this place and to, to, to let that glory fall upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And so the treasure means is encompass anything of significant value. Anything that we value are our treasure. So, but again, I put this way that our treasure must be Jesus Christ, our Lord. As a Christian, that's my treasure. Choosing Jesus Christ in my life. Christ is the treasure of all mankind, I believe that, because God says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the word that he gave his only son that will sober believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So if you don't treasure that, you don't have everlasting life. Simple as that, you know. So to me, we are to treasure the Lord Jesus most of all and above all. When Jesus is our treasure, we will commit our resources, our money, our time, our talents to his work in this world. Amen. Right? Right? Of course. Uh, if you I say, okay, nothing left for me. <laughs> no, that is all for you, actually. What you give to the Lord, it belongs to you. Because what God's is, is for you. So, number two is serving our Lord. Doing everything for His glory. Jesus demonstrates how to properly uh, carry our righteous practices like loving, giving, fasting, and prayer. Paul encourages servant that God is an eternal reward for those who are motivated to serve Christ. Amen. And to tell you, you know, uh, serving the Lord, it, this is my encouragement, as what the Bible says. Your labor will not be in vain. And number three is obedience. So, we laid up treasures in heaven when we obey God. When we live sacrificially for Jesus' sake or serve him by serving the body of Christ, we store up treasures in heaven. The key is submission. Learn to submit. Submit to him. Keep believing and trusting our Lord Jesus. He says you will see greater things than this. I believe there's got to be more. Then you will know 
that I am the Lord. Those who trust in me will never be put into shame. Amen. That's treasures in heaven. But what holds us to keep restoring treasures in heaven? We are envy. We are not satisfied. We are greedy. We are pretender. We wear masks. Our mind is corrupted by this world, trendy. We call it prideful, you know. And our excuses is, I want to experience what others are experiencing in their life right now. So we're, we're totally like trying to be what others do and what others do. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I just follow whatever the word does. I will do it too. But you're not called to be doing that. You are called to follow God and to obey God. Right? Our mind says, I want to be secure. I want to be fame. I want to be fortunate. There's nothing wrong about that. I want to have future. There's nothing wrong about that. But this, these things in our mind led us into worry and led us to fear. What if, if I don't be what if, if I don't become fortunate or never been successful? What if I don't have a future like whatever other people have, like 401k? Right? What if, if I don't have this or become famous, not become a president? You know, I don't know if President Trump or Harris are worried about to be president this November. Of course, yeah? But that is the point. What if, right? This is, this, this ambition that we have in our mind led us into fear and worriness. And that's why we hold on to laid up treasures in heaven. We don't want to do treasures in heaven because we, we, we just wanted to push whatever we wanted to do. To be successful, to be fortunate, but you know what? To tell you the truth, no matter how hard and how, no matter how you push it, I'm telling you, you won't gonna be successful. In this world, I'm telling you, there's no success. Unless you have Jesus. Amen. I'm putting you this one because this is my introduction. Because this leads us all about this. The mindset that we have about this word leads us into worry and anxiety and fear. And But Jesus said, do not worry. Right? Do not worry and do not fear. Actually, he said this, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What makes you worry is that because of your, uh, of your thinking that it's not going to happen. There's no hope in you. What makes you fear? Because you have no assurance what's going to happen. When you have illness, like incurable disease, there's no assurance. Just like what the doctor told me, you have terminal cancer and we don't know what to expect after that. You know, we're gonna try the best thing that we could, but of course it's between you and God now is what you said. That's the doctor said. Of course they're limited. They don't know even. Either, even they are professional and expert to what they're doing, it's still the fact that they know they are limited. People like us are also limited. We are children of God, but our God that we believe is unlimited. So when he said, do not worry, do you trust him by saying that? Now, if this is the introduction, like, let's read this. Now, if God, go ahead. If God so clothes the grass of the field, come on, keep reading it. It's thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you or little faith? Therefore, shall we eat or what we shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things, for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. 
but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry, for tomorrow will worry about its own things, sufficient for the day its own trouble. Very well said, my Lord, my Savior. Do we agree? I believe I agree, but many people disagree with this. Right? Many people disagree with this statement of Jesus. Because they don't know what does it mean about the kingdom, God's kingdom. What is God's kingdom means? What is righteousness? You know why they disagree with this? Because they don't know, they don't have any idea who God is. What is God's kingdom? What is God's righteousness? They They don't agree with this because they don't know what it means. Do not worry about tomorrow. Let Let tomorrow worry about itself. They do not agree with this because what are the things shall be added unto me if I will seek God? Are you sure? If you will seek God... You will find gold. <laughs> if you seek God, God will give you a um, million dollars. See? They're not agree with this because our mindset is different from what God says. Of what, mind, of what God thoughts is not our thoughts. They're higher than ours. That's why they disagree with these things. Now let's move forward. To answer all those questions. You know that's why many people disagree with this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you as. You know. uh, But you know the reason is that we don't know what is God's righteousness. And what is God's kingdom. Let's see and find out. God's kingdom is. God's kingdom. uh, Simplify this uh, in my own description and definition. Is full of promise. Do you believe? God's kingdom is full of promise. Number one, to tell you the truth, is eternal life. The paradise that you meant, it meant for you. You know what I mean? It's for you. But people reject what is for them. The paradise that they're awaited, that awaited for them. So, we must treasure it and find it. God has promised to provide for his own, supplying every need, like in Philippians 4.19, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory through Jesus Christ. Right? When Elijah seek, seek God first, instead of going to the idols and uh, idols of the pagans, You know, he went to seek God, and God poured out his mercy and grace, and he sees the heaven. He sees the heaven by just pouring out the fire. And that fire showing who God is, what is promised to his people, is, is glory. Job, the same thing. When Job was taken everything from him, because Satan, oh wow, this is it. Because Satan asked the Lord, asked God. Because Satan, remember, Satan believes in God. So don't be deceived. There are many people there. Oh, they're good people. Probably, (laughs) they're good people. Probably they're Christian or they have relationship with God. But don't be Uh, Be mindful of these things, you know. Don't just be deceived. You know you have that discernment. You know who are for God and you know who are the believer. And you know who have that relationship with the Lord. And so, and then he asked, and then he asked God, you know, to give, to, uh, to, to give Job to him. Uh, You know what condition is, you can do whatever you want. To him, but you cannot take his soul. Because this soul is mine. See? Your soul is belongs to God. God owns your soul. 
and Satan cannot take it. So no matter what happened, like Job experienced, your soul cannot be taken unless if you disagree, unless if you disagree what Jesus said or what God says, unless you disagree to his kingdom. You know, God's kingdom, God's kingdom is all about love and goodness. And Satan's or enemy's kingdom it's all about hate and darkness. So that's the difference. So don't let people, don't let anyone like, I know I, there's a movie that are coming in the Philippines for, you know, and I, I'm so sad about it that from, they're promoting this, like on the trailer, I saw it, that Santa Claus, Satan Claus, that is the title. And you know, be careful on these things. Like you have people in the Philippines don't let this be promoted or let, let this, I'm not promoting it, I'm just trying to warn people, do not watch this kind of movie. Because they promoting Satan is, can be loving. No, he can't. He can't be loving. And they use all this stuff, like the kids, they, they, Satan tried to uh, tempt, you know, they're trying to tempt the, the uh, probably about eight year old, 10 year old girl, you know, to put a pornography man there, nude man. And then of course, the, the, because the child is so, uh, is so uh, innocent. And so he doesn't, she doesn't really know about those stuff, but she's trying to, but Satan trying to tempt her. See, how can you let people, this is his family movie. And, you know, I, I, for Christmas, yeah, exactly. This is a Christmas movie, you know, but this is so sad about thinking that way. But anyway, Satan can deceive you. All of us can be, all of us can be deceived unless if we, aware, if we are aware of what, that when we have, when we seek God first, that is the thing, when we seek God's kingdom first, we will be aware of all unrighteousness. We are to seek the things that God has priority over the things of the world. That's my point. Primarily, what is your priority? Because if your priority is, is something about your life and all that things that you do, if that's your priority, you will end up being deceived by the enemy. Because you're not aware of that this is from the enemy. Because you're, you, you might neglect this part of knowing, wow, I didn't realize that. Well, the moment I see the trailer, I realize it already. This is not godly. This is definitely deceiving. So poor Filipinos, they're going to watch that movie. Hopefully, hopefully, I don't know what to expect, but I can only pray that people will or Christians in the Philippines will rise up and, and see this kind of, you know, they will not promote this movie, but rather like they, they will close it down, you know? Yes. Well, I don't know about the MTRCB, the one that doing the, the parental guidance or whatever, yeah, but that is actually the parental, the, that the parental guidance. But you know, the church can also have a role for this one that they need to address these things, that this is not godly and this is not a family movie. This is devil, this is evil. Of course, we're not accusing or we're not trying to point fingers or, or telling people are bad or something like that, but we're just putting this, the, putting this out for the truth that let people know. Because we need to seek the kingdom of God. Because if we just keep doing what we do, we, we, we can be easily be part of the world. Which one is your priority? God or this world? Work, 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 work. Right? Do stuff for, your, for yourself. And then you will end up, you will end up like, instead of getting riches, you're getting riches, you're getting, uh, you're, you're getting more valuable, 
you will become more what? Poor. Become more poor, become more, you know, instead, I mean poor in, in, in some way that I would say uh, become foolish. Because what is, full, what, is, uh, what is wisdom in this world is foolishness to God. Right? Which one that you value the most? The, the, the things that we have in this world that we know that they are riches, they are rich, part of the become richness or whatever, or you value God more than anything else in this world? even for your loved ones or in your family, which one that you value most? If we're taking care of God's business as a priority, seeking his salvation, living in obedience to him, and sharing the good news of the kingdom with others, and he will take care of our business as he promised. That's what I believe. Take care of your business to God. Seek him first, his kingdom. And I believe... He will take care of you. Amen. And if that is the arrangement, then we shouldn't be worried. How do we know if we're truly seeking God's kingdom first? Where do I primarily spend my energy? It is my, all my time and money spent on goods and activities that will certainly perish or in the service of God. The results of which live on for eternity. Did you get my point? Are you really seeking God? But how can we do it? And our free to seek, uh, uh, if we're really, if we really truly seeking God's kingdom first, our primarily, probably primarily we do is to give our, to spend our energy most to the Lord. Our time, our money, our assets, whatever you belong to. I don't know if you could do that. It's going to be hard, right? But let me define you why is that so hard and why is that so important? Because this is the things that in our mind, we have in our mind righteousness versus worldliness. Light and dark comes to our mind. You know, we have an example last Thursday about somebody told us, you know, how can I... How can I not resist that when, when it is in my mind? Yes, you can resist the temptation. It's just in your mind. If you have Jesus, if you have relationship with the Lord, if you seek the kingdom of God's first and his righteousness, you can resist that temptation. It's just in your mind. What is in your mind is not the, it's not in action yet it's just in your mind but when you cannot resist it because lack of lack of time and lack of uh, spending energy or lack of spending time with the Lord then it might come through you might not be able to resist the temptation in life Colossians 3, verse 1 to 4, it says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things on the earth, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. In Colossians 3, verse 5, 7, it says this, continuation of that. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. All of these are idolatry. And because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the son of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked. When you live in them. You hear me? That's what Paul warned us. 
Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says this, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this word, but be transformed by renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Matthew 5, 48, Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. 1 Peter 1, 5, 6, 15, 16, but, thus, but as he who called you is holy, you are also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, be holy because I am holy. Amen. Simple as that. Those are instructions. Those are uh, that you need to obey. Those are the word of God that cannot be voided. And, uh, and those are the word of God that will not return void to him. Wisdom dictates that we handle our resources as responsible steward. And righteousness and righteous living contradicts worldliness. In my conclusion, Jesus' teaching doesn't discourage planning and prudent resource management. Neither does he endorse pleasure-seeking, pleasure-loving. Pleasure-seeking and pleasure-loving. Self-indulgent is what I call lifestyle devoid of consideration for the future. A distinction, the distinction exists between planning and worrying. While we recognize that our actions carry eternal significance, disciples of Christ are called to live for for God. If God hasn't called us home tomorrow, we embark on another day dedicated to him. So why we worry? Today, it is that my point here that it, it is in our mind that we can all worry about the next day. And Satan can put that in your mind. Even today, you might see stuff that distract you, and that makes you worry. I've been worried. Uh, this morning, uh, I don't feel good because, you know, the pain that I've been through, going through. But you know what? I will not focus on that. I will continually seek God and, and, and do what is God called me to do, and that is not to worry. And that, for me, not to fear. Because when we, fear, when we worry, when we fear, it, it, what is the fruit of, I mean, what is the fruit of that worry and fear? You know what? You will be neglected, the part of, uh, you, you miss everything. Just like today, I might miss the worship, powerful worship. I might miss the, uh, uh, Wonderful testimony, exhortation that Anna just giving, uh, honoring the pastor of the church, right? I might miss all of those if, if I will have that fear and worry in my mind and put it into action. But rather, I stood up and say, it is in your hand, God. I shouldn't be worried. Today, we all need both grace and mercy of God daily in our lives. And now we can get the mercy and grace of God by just simply having an access to heaven. And how we can get an access to heaven? Number one, a heart given to humility as access to all heaven, of heaven. Matthew 5, 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Number two, a heart given to holiness has access to intimacy with God. So you get closer to the Lord. You get access to Him when you are holy. When you seek first is righteousness. That is holiness. Right? In 1 Peter 1, 16, and I just mentioned that a while ago, this is always an invitation to intimacy with God. 
He doesn't want anything to get in the way or separate us from him. That's why he said, be perfect because your father in heaven is perfect. Be holy because I am holy. And that's how you can get access to heaven. And that's how you can receive grace and mercy of God. And the last thing is that a heart given to honor has access to the heart of the lost. Of the lost. And I think it didn't show there. uh, Of the lost and broken people. You know? So when you honor God, you'll be able to access to those people easily, like the people that are lost. But if you don't have that, if you don't have that honor, you know, honoring God is simple by just simply worshiping Him and acknowledge Him in your life. That's honoring God. But if you don't have that, I don't know if you can get access to those lost people and broken people. Because it will not allow you. Because you don't see it if they're lost or broken. Because many people, they might see, you might see them, they're, they're in good shape. They're happy. They're doing great. But you know, to tell you the truth, they're not. They are in the mis- you, you'll never know. They're miserable. Just like when I go to the hospital, you will see, you know, people, you don't know what, what is in their mind, what is in their heart. You will see different faces. There's long faces. There's people smiling. Even those people that are working there for two, three hours, you, can, you, you, you see them. They were smiling. All of a sudden, they get mad because they're tired of what they're doing. I see one of the oncologists. I said, why you push me too hard? And he said, I'm sorry. You know, I'm, you know where I am at right now, I said, it's painful. So you shouldn't be doing that to me. Oh, I'm sorry, he said. I just, you know, I've been here for, for four, five, eight hours now. And they, he should be going home. But they don't let him go home because it, it, there's more people. I understand, I said. God loves you. Focus on what you're doing. Simple as that. You can, you can, you can easily manage because you will understand. But... If you don't have that Jesus in your heart, if you don't seek, you won't understand that person. Probably if you be, oh, boom. (laughs) The moment he hurts you, probably you just fight back, right? But if you, because if you have Jesus, oh, you you just calm down and, oh, you know, it hurts. Can you just leave? And then he said, sorry, I I am kind of, you know, long, long story, you know. You know, and you know, got all this experience. You might be at your work. Maybe there are people that are, you don't like their attitude all of a sudden. But you know what? You must understand them. They might be going through something. We can't be judgmental, right? Yeah. So now look at this tree. Why, where I am at? Why am I here already? Look at, okay, look at all these three. The honor, the humility, and, and the uh, holiness, right? The honor, humility, and the holiness. Yes, it takes obedience to seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. You know Why? Because if, you cannot, if you're not really obeying God, you won't be able to do it. It's hard to, do, to seek God first and it's and his right to, to seek God's kingdom first and his righteousness if you're not obedient to the Lord. It's so hard. But to tell you the truth, obedience to the Lord is holiness, humility, and honor. Amen. Those three are the key factors of seeking God first and getting access to God. Are you holy? Oh, amen. It's somewhat like, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> yes, you are holy. You are chosen by God. By the grace and mercy of God, yes. 
That's why we need, we, how can we get access to God's grace and mercy? By the grace of God and mercy, by the grace and his mercy, we can be holy. Are you humble? Amen. Yes, you are. Because you are not here in this church right now if you are not humble enough. You probably go to deep, big churches. You're probably going to more, more uh, spontaneous and more lively church, right? You're probably more into that somehow. Not like Pastor Romy. He doesn't even know how to speak English. <laughs> right? Let them yeah. Talk. And then honor. Let them talk. And honor is, is, is another key. Just simply honoring God we can get access to those people who are in trouble. We will know who are they. We will understand who are they. Now, this world and the enemy have no power over you. If you have that holiness, you have that honor, and you have that humility, the enemy have no power over you. Let me simplify that. That is the grace of God. And that is Jesus. Amen. If you have Jesus, this enemy that we know and this world has no power over us. John 19. You know, when Pilate and Jesus talk, they said, The Jewish leaders replied, By our law, he ought to die because he called himself the Son of God. So when Pilate heard this, he was more frightened than ever. So he took Jesus back into the headquarters again and asked him, where are you from? And then Jesus gave no answer. He was silent. And then the next thing that happened, this is what Pilate says. Why don't you talk to me? Do you know, do you realize that I have the power to release you or crucify you? Then Jesus said, you will have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. So the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Now look at that statement. Do you have Jesus in you? Amen. Then whoever is you treat their, your enemies, of course, that is the enemy, the darkness, and this word is your enemy. Remember that. This word is your enemy. Because what this word can offer to you is darkness. Mm -hmm. And so this word have no power over you. Amen. But I have terminal cancer. This terminal cancer have no power over me. That's why I'm standing here. But I have $10,000 debt. Tell you the truth. 10000 10, or whatever millions debt that you have, have no power over you. Just say it. But I have all this problem with my children. My parents are not in good shape. They're divorcing. My, you know, all these problems that we have. To tell you the truth, stand up with your faith and said, with your honor, with holiness and humility, Lord, I believe in you. All these things have no power over me. Amen. Are you going to stand up with that? Amen. Are you going to stand up that you say to people, to say to your enemy, to say to Satan, to say to the devil and darkness and, and this word, you have no power over me. To what people says, you have no power over me. What the doctor says, your cancer is terminal. You have no power over me. What the court says, you'll be put in jail because of your death. You have no power over me. What, the, what, what, your, what you see with your parents are 
getting breaking down and all these problems that you might have to have and you know tell them tell those things you have no power over me but this is what you're going to look at in Ecclesiastes 2 verse 22 verse 23 can you read it all of us can we read it I did not say that, but it's the word of God. Amen. See, all these things that you work hard for in this word is all meaningless. Amen. Simple as that. So why you focus on those things? Why you worried about all of those things? Why you worry and so concerned about all these things that you see in this word? But rather, you not instead of seeking God first and his kingdom and his righteousness, since it's all going to be meaningless. This, the word of God, I did not say it. It's the word of God. But tell you the truth, another word of God that may promise to all the people that trust him. And I want you to ponder this and let's read it all together. This will be the last one. Lamentation 3, 22, 23. See, look at the pattern. <laughs> Two, three, 22, 23, okay? Now look at that. Okay, let's read it. Lamentation 3, 22, 23. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed with you, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. See, which one that you take? This word that is all meaningless, or God that is faithfulness. Amen. His faithfulness. Which one you take? The faithfulness of God or this worldly offers to you that is all meaningless? Let us respond together. Why don't you just get up and respond together. Lord, today we will seek you first. Your kingdom, your kingdom and your righteousness. And your righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto us. And all these things shall be added unto us. As we just read today. As we just read today. That you are faithful. That you are faithful. And you are great God. And you are great God. So thank you, God, and we accept that and embrace those things, O oh Lord God, that we just uttered today. That we seek God first. We prioritize you, prioritize you first, Lord, above all. Because that's what we, we should be as a, as a lover of God, as a believer, and, and, and uh, as obedient to you, Lord, to give you honor and, and, and to humble ourselves and to become like you as holy and, and righteous, Lord. This is what we should be, to trust with your faithfulness, because your, your faithfulness is great. And God, we don't trust this meaningless world, these worldly things that we always see in our lives, but rather we don't seek and find anything from this world, but rather we seek you first. So let it be to all of us today, and we receive this word from you, and let it flow, O oh Lord God, to all your people. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, and pour out his mercy upon you. And I pray to all of us today, as we walk together, to be bold, to be strong, and to be courageous, to speak the truth to many, and this is the truth, that they must, that people must seek God first and his kingdom and his righteousness so that they will not be worried, so that they will not be fear. I pray this to all of us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen.
is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cries holy you are lifted high holy holy forever hear your people sing creation 